Hey, we are built to belong. You're built to belong to a family. You're built to belong to a group. You're built to belong to a team. God has built you to belong. Even if you're not a social person, you are built to be with others. And I remember my senior year of high school, um, I wanted to be on the baseball team. And I got a chance to get in the batter's box. And I remember taking the baseball bat and walking out to the plate. And all I had on my mind was, man, just get a hit. And I remember standing there, and the guy that was pitching had an offer to a couple of colleges, and so I thought, man, if I could just get a couple hits off this guy, maybe I could have a baseball career. And I struck out that time, I struck out the next time, I struck out for the next two games, and then the manager came up to me and he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, son, maybe baseball's just not your game. And it was at that time I realized that I went over whatever it was, and you saw all the young men up here trying to get hits tonight, and it's very difficult to hit a baseball. And if you could hit every baseball that was thrown to you and get a base hit or a home run every time, you'd be batting a thousand. And what's interesting about baseball is that if you could average even 300, so three out of 10 hits, over the course of your career, you would be an all-star. So realize that seven out of 10 times you fail and you could still be a really good baseball player. And I realize that baseball is a lot like life. Baseball is a lot like our lives, where we want to belong, we want to be on the team, we want people to love us, we want people to connect with. And God has built you not only to want to connect with others, but has built you to connect with God. God has built you to connect with Himself. And the thing that we have a problem with is very similar to baseball, where if the pitcher is, say, our lives and the issues that we have in our lives and the drama that we have in our lives and all the things that are thrown at us during the course of our life as we take the bat and try to make something good out of our lives, it could be our sexual sin, it could be lying or cheating or the things that we've done wrong and the things we hold guilt for even in this moment. And all the things that life throws at us, we try to do something good with, but it's just continually failure. And we realize something's wrong with my life, that I can't bat a thousand. I can't do what God asked me to do. My, my conscience tells me something is broken inside. And I don't know what to do. I can't fix myself. I need a fixer. I need somebody to make my life right. I need somebody to make me belong. And before we came here today, last night, there's a fire on the other side of the lake. And if I was to use that illustration, that if all of us were living our lives inside of this stadium, this, this contained our whole lives, and I was to tell you, there's a fire coming. There's a fire on the way and we were to live our lives without any regard for the, the fire that's coming our way, we would realize, man, we need a savior. I need somebody to change me and I need somebody to save me. And if I was to tell you, hey, by the time the fire gets here, there's a door, there's a door, go, go get out that door. And you'll be saved, I'll be saved. Like there's, there's access to salvation. You don't have to die you can have life. And scripture says that that is also true of our spiritual lives. Listen to what I'm saying. Look at me in the eyes. Here we go. Hey! Listen. Ready? Here we go. Here's the idea between baseball and the fire is that you can never be perfect. You will never be perfect. I will never be perfect. But Jesus is our pinch hitter. And Jesus is the one that literally every time we fail is able to forgive us. Every time we lose is able to do something great with the grace that God gives us in, in, from Him in our lives through Jesus. And I want you to understand something. God's love is great for you, 
But many of us just continue to do the same thing over and over. We struggle with our addictions. We struggle with our sexual sin. We just struggle over and over. And we don't want to come to the God who loves us. So my simple message to you tonight, listen to what I'm saying. My simple message to you tonight is you need Jesus. You need God to transform your life. There will be a day, listen, listen to what I'm saying. There will be a day like that fire that they're trying to put out on the other side of the lake right here. I was hoping that we were going to have a game tonight that the, the fire wouldn't be you know, worse than it was. And realize that when you die, there is judgment. Not because God hates you, God loves you, but there's salvation in Jesus. And the one that you need to get through life, the one that will turn your failure into victory because of what he's done for us on the cross is Jesus. And many of us live our lives without God. Many of us live our lives just trying to get through life, just trying to pretend like, man, when I die, there is, there, there'll be no judgment. There's nothing in the way for my future eternally. I'm going to tell you right now, all of us will give an account to God for every failure that we have had in life. But the grace of God is available to us. The grace of God through Jesus on the cross. It's somebody, listen to me, somebody has to pay for your sin. Somebody has to pay for all the failures that we have had. Somebody has to make up for what you and I have done. The God of love reaches out to you even as I'm speaking right now. The God of love wants you to come to him. The God of love wants you to quit living in rebellion against him. Quit living in a failure of your, of your own desires to want to live your life apart from the God who cares for you. So here's my encouragement to you. Listen, I'm done. You have to come to Jesus. I'm not asking you to come to a religion. I'm not asking you to come to a church. Nothing will fix your life. Not politics, not, not a religion, not a church, not a pastor, not a pope, not a place. You need the true and living God to transform who you are from the inside out. And when God transforms your heart, the things you do with your hands will start to change. And you'll start to see the presence and power of God as you start to live your life. Instead of living apart from Him, now you live with Him. Instead of living against Him, now you live for Him because of the power of God that lives in you. And some of us need to come to Christ tonight. Some of us have gone to church. Some of us have lived our lives to try to be better people, but we've never been a different person. We've never been the kind of person that is transformed by the gospel of Jesus. And so tonight, many of us, if this is your night to come to Jesus, you don't know if tomorrow is guaranteed. You don't know when the fire is coming, but there is a way out. There is a door. There is a way for you to be saved. Jesus transformed my life in high school. I was a guy just trying to do athletics, just trying to get through life, trying to do the best I could, and I realized I could not please God. I couldn't even please myself, that I needed the great love of God. So tonight, some of you need to come to Jesus. We have a faith and family night. Guess what? Many of you guys need to join the family. You're built to be with others that love God. You're built to be with the God who loves you. Some of us need to stop running from God and get serious about our relationship with God because someday you will see God and you'll give an account for your life. And on, the, on that day, the only thing that will matter is has Jesus forgiven your sin? Has Jesus been your pinch hitter? Has Jesus made you perfect because of his perfection for you? I'm going to pray. And if any of you in this crowd need to know eternal life, if any of you in this crowd are tired of not being on the team with God, not being in God's family, then this is your night to change. Literally right here. Literally right in Storm Stadium with some weird dude flipping a bat. This is your time. This is your time to find Jesus because God loves you. And it's time for you to start loving God. Let's pray. Jesus, right now I ask you to forgive my sin. The things I've done against you, the wrong I've done, the guilt I carry, the addictions I continue to just make happen in my life. God, I'm tired of living this life. I know there's more. I know there's a life beyond the one I'm living. And so Jesus, I ask you right now, God, to transform who I am. I believe you died for me on the cross. You forgave my sin, saving me from judgment and death and hell. God, because of your great love for me, I give you everything I am right now. I accept your forgiveness. Make me into the person you build me to be. 
God, I give you all of the rest of my life, Jesus, because I want you to be my God and my Savior and the one who makes me right before you. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey. Hey. If you prayed that prayer for the first time tonight, do I have one person that prayed that prayer tonight for the first time? Stand up. Anybody in this place for the first time? Awesome. Anybody else? Anybody else? First time? Sweet. Hey, welcome to the family. Welcome to the team, friends. I love you. God bless you. Have a great night.